Hello guys, time for a good old tradition on this channel. Once a month I gather tips and tricks from Twitter into one video for the last month. So this time I gathered 10 random Laravel tips and tricks from Twitter for April. Let's dive into them. Tip number one comes from Axel and it's about seeders and about the possibility to run seeders on different environments. For example, you need categories to be seeded on all environments, but if it's not production, then you also seed admins and posts. And also here you can change is production to is local, for example, and it depends on the value of app env in your .env file. The next tip is very short from Newton from Laracast, how to test if email is working. Here's the zoomed in version of the same image, basically mail raw just will send this text to your email. This is probably the quickest way to test if you configured email correctly without creating any mailables notifications or any more files than this. You can run it in PHP Artisan Tinker, for example, or just put it randomly in your routes as a callback function. The next tip comes from Hiran, and he's talking about validate with bag in Laravel validation. And for many years, I didn't understand that concept of bag and why you would need that. But from documentation, you can see the example of validate with bag for post, which also doesn't say much of when would you need to use it, but Hiran explains it brilliantly. If you have multiple forms on your page and you want to call validation separately, then if you use bags of validation, then login errors won't mess with your registration form errors. And recently I've been posting similar things on Twitter and here on YouTube in shorts. So taking something from the docs and then explaining it with real example, what is the impact, what actually happens when you run some function. I even have a hashtag on Twitter for that practical Laravel docs or docs with screenshots. So great job by Hiran explaining when you would use the feature. The next tip comes from myself and it's about extra security layer for returning HTTP status code. For example, in the policies by default, if the policy returns false, then the automatic response is 403 status code, which means forbidden, which actually means that the resource exists but you don't have the permission to view it or to update it. But maybe you want to add another layer and return 404, which would mean that the resource may or may not exist, which would kind of hide another information from potential hackers. So this is code example from policy zoomed in version. So you return either response allow or response deny as not found. The next tip comes from Ponyapal, and by the way, the sunlight outside is very weird today, so it goes up and down in out of clouds, so I imagine this video will be with very different colors behind my face just because of the sun. Anyway, back to Laravel, rendering blade fragments. Did you know about that? Again, the zoomed version, but this is actually a screenshot from the docs, so you can define the fragment, and then you may define that only that fragment should be included in the response. Personally, I never remember using that or having the case for that. The docs mentioned Turbo and HTMX. So for me, it's just a cool thing to know. I wouldn't know where I would use it, but still wanted to share it because the tweet got a lot of likes on Twitter. The next tip comes from Osama and it's about monitoring failed jobs. There are a few different ways to monitor failed jobs and I haven't seen this approach. Again, the zoomed in version. So in the app service provider, you may define in the boot queue failing and define the global behavior for any failing job. From that, you get information about event, about exception, about the job itself, and you may want to notify someone for any jobs. Of course, you can set those notifications and behavior for each job separately, but this would be kind of like a global behavior. And also Osama suggests that you can even specify some kind of interface for certain jobs to be notifiable. In this case, the code wouldn't work because notifiable is isn't present here in any parameter from what I understand. So this is just the concept that you can set that globally in the app service provider. The next tip comes from myself and let's talk again about APIs and status codes and 404 error messages, which may be insecure, maybe is not the right word, but let's see the default behavior. If you return 404 with route model binding, this is the default. So the message itself tells that we're using Laravel and what is the path to our models, which may be useful information in theory for potential hackers. A much better way is to have something like this, just something not found and more information, but not revealing that we have 
Laravel under the hood. And this is the code for that. In the Bootstrap app file, where we define exceptions since Laravel 11, you get to define model not found exception. And interestingly, we need to get previous because by default, it throws HTTP not found exception from Symfony. So we need to check the previous exception, which is model not found. From there, we can get the name of the model and then after some string operations, we we'll transform it into order and then parse it as a variable. The next tip comes from A0 bug. I hope I pronounced it correctly. It's about where is null. And this is an interesting thing, kind of a silly thing, but it may cost you so dearly if you don't notice it. Let me zoom in again. So this is the code. If you just check for where not sender ID user ID and that sender ID may be null, that null will not be taken into account. So this is, it's called accurate query the method, where not or where null. So as the tweet points out, null is not a value. It is not true. Again, it sounds like fundamental thing, but sometimes you may skip it, forget it, or maybe just not think about the case where the value in the database may be null and your condition may not work the way you intended. The next tip comes from Aniket, and this is a configuration option binary operator spaces by pint. This is kind of a quick thing. If you prefer this styling of arrays, then align single space will allow you to reformat it with pint automatically. The opposite option, which is the default, is called single space, and it would format the arrays like this. And the final tip comes from Newton from Laracasts again. This is a very handy method called owns, which you may add to your user model for shorter syntax elsewhere. This is the zoomed in version. So whether the user owns the model, this is very flexible with model object and relation name, and it calls is, which doesn't query the database and just compares the objects. So the usage is this user object owns and then the object of that eloquent model. It's very, very readable. For example, you can use this in the policies. That said, I'm not a huge fan of doing some kind of shortcut syntax new methods because for new developers on the team, they may be new, may be unclear, and they would wonder where that comes from. Maybe it's a package or something else. But if you prefer such shorter methods, this is a very good candidate to become a part of your user model. So yeah, that's it. 10 tips for this time. Which one did you prefer or what new have you learned? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.